Now, a lot of people have the idea that one of the reasons you should move to the country is because things are much cheaper in the country. Now, sometimes that is the case, okay? Maybe things are 10, 20% cheaper, I, I don't know. May, I kind of feel like they're about the same, with the exception of the most important thing, land, or even rent, right, is significantly cheaper, but most things are pretty much the same. Um, that is not the real reason, financially, why it's a good reason to move to the country. The real reason is how it changes your behavior how the lifestyle is just categorically different from living in the city, okay? Um, I, I guess the easiest way to think of it is living in a city or really living in a place where it's expensive to live over time will make it more and more expensive for you to live there, okay? As you spend more time in a city, you will get used to spending more and more money, whereas as you live in the country, you will get used to spending less and less money. Okay, let me, let's explain, let's think about it in very personal terms, okay? So let's say there are two people, Billy and Sally, and they graduate from college, okay? Who cares what their degrees are? It doesn't matter. They graduate from college. Let's say they're boyfriend and girlfriend and they split up. Oh, things aren't working out. Let's just go, let's go our separate ways. So Sally, uh, she gets a fantastic job, okay? She gets a six-figure job uh, working, it's a great starting job in some big city, okay? Uh, doing consulting, whatever that means. So she's going to move to the city and she's going to get $100,000 a year. Okay. Billy, on the other hand, now he has a degree, but he's, ah, man, I, I can't, I couldn't find a job like anywhere in the city. I'm going to move to the country. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. And he originally, he moves just because uh, it's cheaper to get stuff and he'll get some throwaway job that, you know, someone just needed someone with a college degree. And let's say Billy makes around 50000 a year, okay? So I'm kind of adjusting for inflation. These numbers would probably be lower a couple years ago, but, you know, nowadays I feel like that. You know, I'm being actually a little generous to both of them right now. They'd probably be making a little less, but not, not that much less, depending on... Um, anyway, so uh, let's say... Now, Billy in his scenario, it's very easy in the country for him to, let's say, pay... I don't know, $500 for rent. It's actually easy to pay $200 for rent if you're living to, willing to live in somebody's house or something like that, right? If you're starting out, maybe Billy's like, oh, I'll put up with that. But let's say he gets his own place, gets his own apartment, maybe his own house for $500 a month, okay? Easily doable in the country. Um, so, you know, he's spending 6000 a year on living expenses. And, you know, it's actually pretty easy. Actually, let's, let's use round numbers. Let's say every month, Billy spends a combined $1,000, half on rent, uh, half on other things, you know, groceries, whatever, car insurance. He, he could actually get away with, you know, spending a lot less than 500 bucks in the country. But let's just use an even number and say that that's $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year. Okay, so that's Billy's expenses. Everything else from that $50,000 minus 12 is straight into savings. So $38,000, he's saving that, okay? So let's look at Sally. Here is the issue with Sally. Sally's making lots of money, okay, $100,000. And let's say she starts out in the city at a pretty cheap apartment. Cheap for the city is $1,000 a lot of times. I remember when I lived in Tucson, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to find an apartment shared with someone else where I was paying $800. <laughs> Uh, and I, especially with inflation, $1,000, yeah, that's basically a good starting point if you want a small apartment. Uh, of course, if you're in LA or New York City, maybe you can get a pod in someone's bedroom for $1,000. I'm not quite sure. Um, so, but let's say $1,000. Now, here's what happens to Sally. Something happens to her in the city. She's very busy. Uh, and she starts out being very frugal. She makes her own food, makes herself breakfast, makes some coffee. You know, she takes a brown bag to lunch, uh, of lunch to work. Um, she'll eat dinner by herself, maybe with friends. Okay, but she's not going out. She's not going out. But this is what inevitably happens. Okay? Ugh, I'm so busy. Ugh. Uh, you know what? Um, I ran out of coffee. You know what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to go to Starbucks this morning. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to get breakfast there, too. I'll get, like, some kind of croissant. All right? So I'll, I'll, I'll get some stuff. At, I'll make that... I'll, I'll go there instead. I'll get coffee later. Well, that becomes a habit, inevitably. 
Okay, it's convenient. Uh, uh, it's just a little bit of money. I'm, I'm going to buy a coffee in the morning. Okay? Uh, lunch comes around. Oh, here's the thing. I, I really wanted, when I started this job, I really wanted to, you know, take my lunch to work. But I just feel like a dork because, you know, everyone else in the office, they all go down to the sandwich shop that's like on the bottom, li uh, on the first floor where we are. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to go with them for lunch. I just feel, I would feel like kind of a nerd if I stayed around and ate my own brown bag lunch. I'm going to go with them, you know, M maybe just once or twice a week. That turns into a habit as well. Okay, after work, oh, I'm so stressed after work. Uh, you know, I could just go home and like, uh, just, I don't know, do whatever I do at home, but... It'd be real. Oh, I, I kind of want a smoothie. Ooh, there's a happy hour going on. The, the guys at work want me to come to that. Ooh, there. Oh, I really want boba tea. There's a Vietnamese place right next door. There are all these different things there. There are all these different th temptations in front of you all the time. And once you fall for the temptations, they become habits. <laughs> and that's how it is. And that's how it is for a lot of people living in cities. I know many people uh, who have lived in cities or live in cities who easily spend $100 a day. A hundred dollars a day just on different stuff. Again, they're making six figures. Sally's making good money, but a hundred dollars a day, or even half of that, adds up. You know, if you were spending a hundred dollars a day, just put two zeros on the, the number of days in a year, and you will find that that is thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars a year. Okay, that's a significant pay decrease for personal convenience. Okay. Now, 100 might be an exaggeration, might be an underestimate on my part. It depends on where you live. Cities can be very different. But my, my point in general is that the longer Sally is out there, the more she is tempted to spend more and more. And this doesn't just apply for getting food at restaurants. This applies for where she lives. I said, oh, she got a budget $1,000 apartment. Well, what happens when she starts going to all of her friends' houses and she realizes everyone else has a slightly nicer house than me? And, uh, you know, it'd be, I just need a little bit more space or, oh, it'd be really nice to just, uh, maybe I'll get this place for 1500 Okay, maybe this place for 2000 right? I just need a little more wiggle room. It just needs to be a little nicer. I don't want to be that, that girl who's in a nasty apartment, right? Same thing happens with her car, which she, maybe she doesn't even use it that often. But when she does, she's embarrassed because she has a clunker that she used to use in college. Everyone else, oh, it ha they all have new cars or cars that are only a couple of years old. Oh, I'll just get a, I, hey, I mean, I can, I can make a monthly payment, even a good, maybe $500 of a monthly payment on some car, right? I'll just get a new car and do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know how it works, right? So there are two things at work here. One is the temptations are always in front of her. She, there are all these conveniences, expensive conveniences, or maybe they're not even expensive. There are just so many of them that uh, are constantly in front of her. And secondly, there's the social aspect. Now, there, there is always a social aspect to consumption. It's true in the, the country as well. But in, the, in cities now, it is cutthroat, okay? If your buddy gets a boat, you want a boat, you know? If your buddy, uh, I don't know, if, if they're hang gliding, you want to hang glide, right? There, there's this sense in which a lot of people will do the same kind of consumption as their friends. And there's always an arm race, arms race. And again, you might start out with $100,000, but that ends up disappearing <laughs> as the year goes on. You know, you, you, can re you can look up statistics about, you know, uh, I, I remember there was one, I forget which uh, period, periodical it was with, were, ugh, which periodical it was with, but it was something like millennials, 60% uh, of millennials making over 100,000 still are living paycheck to paycheck, right? That, that's the lifestyle they live in because they, on paper, they have this great income that is all just being eaten away by bad habits, bad habits, which they could not have in the country. So what's the difference in the country? I mean, I mean the irony is there are Billy and Sally might be saving exactly the same amount of money at the end of the year because Sally might be and Sally might actually be saving a lot less because she's blowing through. Maybe she goes on expensive vacations and all this kind of stuff, you know, getting a new car. I don't know, all these kind of things. Um, but let's say they're they're going home with the same amount of savings. Let's say they're both going home with eh, thirty thousand dollars at the end of the year. Right. To put in a savings account. Well, that's actually that makes Sally lose even more because uh, that money means a whole lot more to Billy. OK, because he, he can wait, let's say, five years and he could easily just buy a house in cash and never have to worry about having to pay a mortgage or having to pay rent anymore. Right. 
That's his. He can leverage that to his own purposes. He could buy in cash uh, a small building downtown and start a little business. Can Sally do that? If she saves up $150,000, can she buy a, city, a, a, a house in her city? No. No, it doesn't mean anything, right? So, uh, and, and the money, this is the, the other important thing. So, as I said, living in the city, it breeds more spending. You are going to be more and more and more invested in it. You're going to be buying more. And mind you, this isn't permanent stuff. This is like you're just increasing your consumption. You want nicer and nicer and nicer clothes, right? You want nicer and nicer things. Uh, and it's like a, a, a pretty meaningless arms race at the end of the day, okay? Now compare that to how it is in the country. In the country, when you spend money, that money, uh, you know, the, the way I remember doing a video talking about this, whenever you have money, you should spend money in such a way to reduce your need for more money, right? And the thing about, let's say, Billy, who's living in the country, if he has land to work on, what can he do? Hey, he could build a, a workshop, a little shed. He can do some things in it. He can have a greenhouse. He can have a garden. He has lots of room. Um, in, in, and that means that Billy's going to be less reliant on the money that he makes, okay? So as time goes on, Billy is in a better and better and better situation, even if he just has this throwaway job that he doesn't care about, that doesn't do anything for him. Maybe Hey, maybe he'll get a better job. Maybe he'll do something online, whatever. Everyone's working online. He can do it as well, right? But uh, Sally is not in a good position, right? She, she has to constantly, she is on the gerbil wheel. Okay, that, that's what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. So uh, when you're making life decisions, think about this kind of stuff, okay? It sounds on paper like Sally is in a much, oh, I'm making $100,000 a year compared to, oh, my ex-boyfriend who made $50,000. No, that's, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? That's not, uh, actually, I, I realize that people probably think that I'm like, subtweeting a hypothetical ex-girlfriend of mine. That is not the case. I just want to go ahead and clarify that because, <laughs> um, but nonetheless, like, um, like a, a lot of people look on paper at how much money they're making and they feel like they're richer than they actually are. Whereas if you can minimize your expense, if you can be like Billy and if you if you at 25, 30, 35, you have a, a house totally paid off that you own and you have property and your monthly expenses can be really just your groceries or insurance or little smaller things like that. You are in an infinitely better situation than someone who has to keep on the gerbil wheel nonstop. You know what I mean? That That is what I'm getting at. Um, it, it is a less stressful lifestyle. It's a better lifestyle. And guess what? All the perks of a city, I, again, I, I've been talking as if like countries, they don't have anything to do in. They, you don't have these temptations of like coffee shops or something like that. Um, that that's not um, like in the country. If you want to go to a nice restaurant, you just got to do a little more driving. You got to drive to the slightly bigger town or something like that. You got to know places around there. So, you know, if your buddy has a... Uh, uh, you know, a birthday, you'll go to a nice restaurant or, or you'll go, you know, on a trip somewhere. It's, it's actually pretty normal in the country for people to make, I guess, carpool together to big cities to do things over the weekend or something. You know, that that's a thing. Um, so these things are not out of your grasp, but they are out of your realm of temptation. OK, so that makes that makes it good. Like if I if I want to do the things that someone can do in a city, I can do them. They're just not constantly in front of me, distracting me from what I'm actually trying to do. If I want to go to a city, you know, I can I can get a ticket to a you know on a bus to New York, and I can, I can experience that for a weekend, okay? And I can get sick of it, and I can go back home where I own everything. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Um, it's not it's not about like save. It's not about things being cheaper in the country. It's about your behavior changing right? Now, if you're super autistic and disciplined, you might think that, oh, I can live in the city and I can just not spend money on this kind of stuff. But I guarantee you, because this happened to me when I lived in college towns or big cities, I got in the habits of, uh, you know, me, Mr. Anti-Fun, Mr. Resisting Temptation, Mr. All this kind of stuff. I guarantee you, uh, you know, I fell for this kind of stuff. I would not necessarily get in a daily habit, but I would end up spending way more than I end up spending out here. You know what I mean? Because it's there, you know, that, that makes a difference. So separate yourself from the temptation. That, that's what I'm trying to say. 
and um, you know, separate yourself from the cutthroat, socialite, nouveau riche, upper middle class, um, uh, you know, th that that kind of cultural environment, which it's all people LARPing as if they're rich. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. They're, they're not as rich as they think, you know, they, in, in, unless, I don't know, unless you just never have to think about money, you're not rich. You know what I mean? And weirdly enough, you can actually make yourself like that by living in the country much easier than you can by living in the city. Okay. So that's all I have to say.